Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. The poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kin folks said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. Wanted to see me, Mr. Clambert? Yes, sir, Mr. Honest John. Uh, we had us a kind of a bad experience. Here? In my town? Washington, D.C.? Yes, sir. Uh, it happened right after I bought the White House from your Indian friend, Sutton Hall. Ah, yes. The last of the District of Columbia Indians. Noble woman. Oh, I ain't faulting her. It was when we took the deed over to give it to the president that we run into the trouble. You tried to see the president without telling me? Oh, we didn't want to bother you. We thought we'd just drop in, hand him the Waukegan. What? Are you forgetting? Waukegan is Indian for deed. Ah, yes, of course. You gave it the pale face pronunciation. Confuse me for a moment. Well, anyway, it was at the gate to the White House where things went wrong. I'll say they did. Oh, I'm... Terribly sorry, especially for your sake, Ellie Mae. No, I'm Granny. I did it again. It's very confusing. You both look so young and radiant. Well, I don't feel young and radiant. When we tried to see the president, they took us to the calaboose. No. Well, come to think of it, it wasn't exactly a calaboose. It was more like a hospital. Well, anyway, it was something called a psycho ward. Do you know what that is? Can't Never say heard of it. That, my friends, is a place reserved for very important visitors. Like yourself. Now that I recollect, they did think that we come from a foreign country. Yeah, a place called uh, Paranoia. There was another country mentioned, too. That's right. They said, uh, from the way we looked and acted... We was either uh, paranoics or schizophrenics. Yeah, a natural mistake. There are many of them here in Washington. Well, you'd think that after Jed laying out a million dollars to buy the White House for him, the president would see us. I'll go to the White House right now and speak to the chief. Well, you tell him and his missus that we would like to be invited for vittles. You will be. Vittles in the gold room. Tell the president's missus not to go to no trouble. I'll do that. I'm sure the First Lady will be very relieved. First Lady? That's how we refer to the President's wife. Did you hear that, Granny? They call her the First Lady. Yeah. I bet the other President's wives wouldn't appreciate a crack like that. Flo? Flo? Flo, where are you? I'm trying to scrape off this Indian paint so we can blow town. Blow town. Honey, I've got the Clampets convinced that you own the entire District of Columbia. So? So, I've only sold them one little parcel, the White House. Now, Shifty. Well, what's wrong with getting another million for the Capitol building and the Washington Monument, Independence Hall? That's in Philadelphia. I'll let it go for half price. I get the paint back on your sitting hawk, and they're sitting ducks. Shifty, Shifty, be sensible. You got a million dollars to fight smog. You got another million for the White House. Let's take the two million and fly to Guatemala. Guatemala? What's in Guatemala? When we get there, us and the two million. Forget it. All right, then. Let's split the money. That's the deal. The next two million is yours. <laughs> Honey, have a little faith in me and we'll be in Clover. We'll be in Leavenworth. Sweetie, 
You're arguing with a man who's a proven success. I'm worth two million dollars. You haven't got a penny. Go put on the paint. <laughs> Annie, there's a maid that does all that. You can't expect one poor girl to do it all, Jed. There's a thousand rooms in this hotel. Wow, Betty! Let's tell a surprise. Well, that's mighty nice, are you, Ellie? What is it, Ellie? Take a look. Ain't they cute? Of course it's cute, Ellie. But if there's one thing we don't need right now, it's more critters. Your paw's right, Ellie. Take them back. But, Granny... I already named them. Don't matter. Take them back. They's all named after presidents. This one here is George Washington. This one here is Abraham Lincoln. And this one is Theodore Roosevelt. Take them back, Ellie. This one is Jefferson Davis. He can stay. <laughs> we got so many critters now, Mr. Drysdale has to look after them first. One poor little Confederate kitten ain't no bother. Besides, Miss Jane is there to help. Big show inside. to you. Did you buy a ticket? Well, of course not. Right over there, 25 cents. What is going on in there? Buy a ticket and find out. Chief, this is important. I have got to talk to you. Not without the ticket. Make it snappy. School will be out pretty soon. I'm expecting a couple hundred kids for the big show. What big show? Ellie's animals. If I'm going to take care of them, I might as well make a buck. Children can see animals at the zoo for nothing. I've got an act they won't see at the zoo. Fearless leopard woman fights full grown mountain lion with her bare hands. Where are you going to find anybody crazy enough to do a thing like that? See if this fits. <laughs> Forget it. Are you going to disappoint all those children? And the mountain lion. Now, perhaps you had better listen to the news. Uh, Washington, D.C. bank just phoned. Jet Clappett has written checks for $2 million. $2 million? Who'd they made out to? Cash. The bank simply wanted to know if they were good. Well, I hope you told them no. Chief, I can't lie. You can't lie. You can't fight mountain lions. What do I need you for? Well, for one thing, to take care of the bank while you're putting on kitty shows. Don't knock it. 200 kids at 25 cents a throw, that's $75. That's $50. So you caught me. You'd be surprised how many people don't. <laughs> now hop on a plane to Washington and bring the clappers home. Well, what do I use for money? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, as a... Uh, $500. Bring back the change. That's $300. So you caught me again. Big deal. Happy landings. I must say, Chief, you're taking this all very calmly. Why not? At least the Clappets aren't in the clutches of that confidence man, Shifty Schaefer. I said, Mr. President, my pals, the Clampets have spent $2 million on your behalf. When are we going to see them? Then I said, if necessary, I'm sure they'd be willing to spend even more. What did he say? Uh, you should have seen his face. We'd like to. <laughs> he was deeply moved. Tears welled up in his eyes. Have you ever seen a president cry? We ain't never seen a president do nothing. <laughs> Granny, let Mr. Hans John tell his story. What makes you think it's a story? Oh, oh, yes, you mean the account of what happened? Yes, well, just then the hotline from the Capitol building rang. Congress was in a turmoil. How come? Sitting Hawk has pitched her teepee on the grounds of the Capitol building and will allow no one to enter or leave her property. Well, that's right. She owns a whole shooting match. Congress has adjourned. The country is paralyzed. A state of emergency has been declared. No one knows what to do. It's terrible. Well, why don't we just go over to the Capitol and I'll buy it from her? 
What an idea. What a patriotic gesture. Once again, you have saved your country. The president will be overjoyed. This time, we'd like to see the joy. <laughs> That's just about the prettiest building I ever did see. It's even bigger than the White House. I think I see something off. Where, Jed? Got a TP pitched in the bushes yonder. Isn't it terrible to think that our nation's capital can be barricaded by one stubborn Indian? Well, now, you got to remember, she don't trust Potawatomis. Who? Oh. Politician. They speak with forked tongues. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How much do you reckon that she's going to charge Jed for the capital? Who knows? I'll do my best to bargain with her. Let's go. How? How? Howdy, ma'am. Sequoia, Manitoba, Ponderosa. Yep. The tall farmer with a mustache. That's me. Minnehaha Zuni. I know Zuni means doctor, but what's that ha-ha business? Minnie ha-ha means lovely lady. Lovely lady doctor. Ain't that nice? Schlamel. <laughs> what does that mean? Loosely translated, that means genius. <laughs> sure got you, Peg. Ask her what you take for the capital. Pawtucket wampum powwow wigwam. Now, Gonset. Make an offer. <laughs> Don't start too high, Jed. Leave room to dicker. I will. You want me to loosen her up with a shot of fire water? No, no. Well, Alice John, I paid her one Allegheny for the White House. Ask her if she'll take that for the Capitol. We can try. Chickasaw, Wichita, Allegheny? Okay, Fenoki. What'd she say? I'm afraid there's no polite way to interpret that. I take it you tear me down. Very rudely. Pawwaw wigwam, Tacoma, Allegheny. Uh, she's asking two million. Tell her to go okey for no Granny. Well, Honest John, if that's her rock bottom price, I reckon we'll have to meet it. Tacoma, Allegheny? Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa. It's sunny. Shall I uh, give the check to uh, Princess Sutton Hawk? No, no, no. There's a special congressional committee to handle the acquisition. Make your check payable to uh, committee acquiring Senate headquarters. That's a lot to write. Couldn't I just use the initials again? Good idea. The Washington shortfall. Committee acquiring Senate headquarters. Well, what do you know? Comes out C A S H again. <laughs> Honest John, if Jed is buying the capital from Second Hawk, why can't she get to keep the money? She will. But first, Congress has to convert it to buffalo hide. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you are, Slamil. What was that? Oh, the Indian word for genius, yeah. Now, can we get to see the president? Of course. First, however, Sitting Hawk has authorized me to offer for sale several other choice parcels of local real estate. Ixnay. Ixnay. That's the Washington Monument. Ixnay. Amscray. <laughs> What's Amscray? Uh, that's the Lincoln Memorial. She'll only sell them if you take them both. <laughs> she doesn't want to break up a set. <laughs> Well, I reckon it wouldn't do no harm to look at him. Well spoken, my friend. Guatemala, Guatemala Pronto. What'd she say? She doesn't want to sell the airport. But if she closes it down, where will people land? Oh, we got to have an airport. Yes, now look. You two stroll over and take a look at the capital. I will reason with her in her native language. See you at the hotel. Sure do hope you can get her to Poughkeepsie to Guatemala. I'll do my best. So long, Satan Hawk. Don't take any wooden buffalo hides. <laughs> you. Look at Theodore Roosevelt go after that milk. He's got the best appetite to budge. You know something, Millie? I can't find paranoid no place. Now, schizophrenia neither. 
What are you talking about? Remember in the SAC Award when they said we was either paranoids or schizophrenics? Well, this here map of the world don't show neither one of them countries. Oh, who cares? We's American. Come on, Theodore. Now you can curl up on a bed and take a nap with George Washington. Found Paraguay, but no paranoia. <laughs> Come in. Uh, excuse me, sir. If you're finished, I'll take the dishes. Oh, sure. Help yourself. Hey. Hey, tell me something. Do I look foreign to you? No. Why? Well, some folks think we's a family of paranoics or schizophrenics. Uh, what folks? The ones that had us at the psycho ward. They had you at the psycho ward? Hmm. They picked us up just as we was moving into the White House. Oh, well, that's a shame. I uh, hope you enjoyed your lunch. Oh, yeah. The first two was real good. I couldn't finish the third. So, Ellie may give part of it to Theodore Rose. Sorry. Hey, will y'all be quiet? You're gonna wake up George Washington. George Washington is sleeping in there? Right over yonder. Abraham Lincoln and Jefferson Davis is in that room. Swell. Glad they finally made up. Oh, howdy, Mr. Waiter. Guess what, youngins? I just bought the Capitol building, lock, stock, and center. Oh, God! And if the price is right, he's gonna buy the Ixnay and the M scrape. That's the Washington Monument and the Lincoln Memorial. Oh, Mr. Waiter, this here's my granny, and that's my pa. That figures. <laughs> Uncle Jed, that Washington Monument is a real moneymaker. Why, they get 10 cents a head just to ride up in the elevator. I ain't buying it to make money, Jethro. I'm gonna turn the whole thing over to the United States government. Can we go along, Paul? You take the young'uns, Jed. I've got some sheets to wash. Come on. Uh, Honest John's waiting to take it. <laughs> well, Mr. Clampett. How do you like it? Real fine, and that sure is a dandy elevator ride for 10 cents. Now that you're buying it, you can ride free. <laughs> My doggies, if an am screen is pretty easy, Ixnay. And it's all yours for the bargain price of one million dollars. Hey, Uncle Jed, now that you bought the Supreme Court building, can I be a judge? How about that, Honest John? It's a cinch. I'll talk to the president. <laughs> but, Honest John, what would I do with the Pentagon? We'll figure something. It's too good a bargain to pass up. Shifty, I've been worried out of my mind. Relax, squad. Chief Matsalute has returned triumphant. Are you ready? You are looking at $10 million in pale face wampum. Ten million? And you wanted to quit with two. <laughs> Look at this. Smart control. The White House. The Capitol. Washington Monument and Lincoln Memorial. The Zoo. Supreme Court Building. The Pentagon. Dulles Airport. Library of Congress. The Potomac River. You got a million dollars for the Potomac River? Well, it was so polluted. I let it go cheap. What? <laughs> <laughs> Shifty, I gotta hand it to you. Good idea. Ah, that'll be our champagne and caviar. Who ordered that? I did. I thought a little celebration is in order. Come in. Excuse me, I'm looking for some kittens at... Mr. Honest John. Kelly May, don't find one of your kittens. Honest John. Well, would you look at this? It's Honest John and Seton Hawk. They is me. <laughs> Honest John, I sure never expected this. Well, you see, uh, you have got to be the nicest man that ever lived. <laughs> well, you see what happened? What? Who else but you would take in a poor old Indian woman ain't got no place to fetch her teepee? <laughs> what? Ain't I always said it? The man is a living saint. He's the salt of the earth. What a nature's nobleman. 
I don't know what to say. You don't need worry, Jonas John. You speak with deeds, deeds of kindness. I'm going to change this here kitten's name from George Washington to Honest John Schaefer, because you're the greatest American I know. Please, don't say that. It's not true. It sure is. That's a fact. If everybody was like you, there wouldn't be no wars or riots. All God's children would love one another like they was meant to. Stop it, will you? We ain't said half enough. Why, you must be the finest man that ever lived. Look, you want to know the kind of man I am? I'm a confidence man. That's the truth. We got nothing but confidence in you. <laughs> you, you don't know what you're saying. I don't, huh? When you're the only man that a 150-year-old Indian will trust, you are something special. All right. Want to hear something? This woman is my wife. Did you hear that? This blessed man married this poor old hag to make her last days on earth happy. Listen to me. We work together. We're confederate. Glory be if all the people were like you, the South will rise again. <laughs> oh, God bless you, honeymooners. Ready? I think we'd best get out of here before we all go to balling. Wait a minute. Here. Take your ten million back. Why? It's yours and hers. We don't want it. We don't need it. What's the matter? Was it something we said? It's everything you said. Here. Well, I'm not taking it back. Well, I'm not keeping it. <laughs> Happy New Year. Well, right. let's go in the other teepee. Well, if that don't beat all. It's our own fault, Granny. We overpraised him. You just can't do that to a modest man. Well, come on, everybody. <laughs> It's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation. <laughs>